Okay, guys. So I've got the GoPro strapped to my chest. I want you guys to let me know how the video comes out, and of course I'll watch it too. But we're gonna we're doing a maintenance here. I usually don't film maintenances, but it's my first call of the day. Well, actually, I got my subcontractor started on a change out, and now I'm getting to my first call of the day. Get this old swimming pool out of the way. I think I see a snake under there. Yep, a little baby snake. Get out of there. I don't know if it's a venomous. That doesn't look venomous. Uh, it's got a little debris on it. But it's not, it's clean enough where I can check the charge without having to clean it first. That's just how I do it. The back side is pretty dirty. I don't know if y'all can see that. But it's still clean enough to where I can uh, check the charge without having to clean it first. Now, if, there, if, if it was completely plugged up all the way around, of course, I would clean it first, but I'll probably leave the gauges on it while I clean it. Caps are loose. Go to 410A, zero them out. To change my gasket in that one. Doesn't look too bad. I had to buy a new Milwaukee. I dropped my other one in the mud when, we, when I was running all them calls in the rain. And it worked for a little while after that, and then it just died, crapped out on me. But I found out we have an authorized Milwaukee repair shop here in town. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it fixed and keep it as a backup. Make sure there's no wasp in here and none in the disconnect. Nope. No wasp. Ah, this is a uh, when this is when they first came out with the new uh, with the new platform, 2016. And the reason I know that is because they got the capacitor mounted upside down. They don't do that anymore. They put them upright, which I'm probably gonna do as well. So for all you got, oh look, there's the date right there. It was installed on. August 3rd of 16. So for all you guys that say capacitor upside down, capacitor upside down, 
Wasn't me. I didn't do it. it. Came from the factory that way. York's units used to come from the factory that way as well. Charge is looking good. My phone is ringing, and that would be my lovely wife. Okay, we're back. Got the capacitor unmounted. Brown is fan on ream. Purple is hermetic. That sucker's on there. I don't think it's ever been pulled off. And then your oranges are your commons. It is a 45 plus 10. Is this a three and a half or a four ton? This is a four ton. All right, we're looking for 45. We have 46.20, and we're looking for five. We have, no, we're looking for 10, and we have 10, okay. So we're good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount the capacitor the right side up. I'm gonna extend these wires. There we go. That'd be her my hermetic. some more of that, some, some of that slack out. There we go. That's one of the commons. Plenty of slack. Okay. Got the common hooked up. One of them. This is oh, this is the one for the uh, from the contactor. I don't it ooh, it's gonna have a hard time reaching. Okay. Hopefully I have an orange wire. Well, let me see if I can lower this thing some more. That's about as low, low as I can get it right there. And it's almost, but it's not touching. Let's see if we can get it to work. Yeah, it's not gonna work. All right, I'm gonna have to get a longer wire for that one. Where's my fan? There's my fan. Got some slack out of it. That'll work. Let's go take a walk to the truck. And see if I can find a longer orange wire. I've got plenty of wire that I strip off of these units. Yep, look, I see an orange one right there. I got a bunch of orange ones. This one will be good. I'll just have to put an end on it. Got an orange wire here. do a truck tour for you guys soon. Oh, 
and then broke one of my damn containers. Trying to get it back in here. Oh, don't need that one. Let me see if I can shut this. Yeah, I got it shut. I'm probably gonna put two new ends. I don't like the way this end looks right here. It looks kind of bent, so I'll just put two new ones, two insulated ones. <clears throat> okay. So. Pull that off. Okay, get me some connectors. I have a nice kit here with all kind of terminals. So the first thing I'm gonna do is measure this out. Okay, we're gonna cut it about right here. Give it a little slack. Okay, bend that over to make a nice, good connection inside that connector. That one could probably be stripped a little more. There we go. There we go. And I'm gonna put insulated ones on it. Good. Good. So now we'll go back right here. All right, I'm gonna lift that capacitor up now since we got enough slack. Ah, damn it. Okay, I found the screw. I don't want it sitting too close to that contactor. Alright. And that'll go. Nice tight fit. Yeah, nice tight fit. Let's just fire it up, make sure. Oh yeah. So that looks better. Got the capacitor mounted it, it the right way, but it came from the factory that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down and I'm gonna start the cleaning process. Okay, so I usually don't use coil cleaner unless they're really, really dirty. But this is a 2016 and it's never had maintenance done on it before. And, okay, yeah, we still should be good. It's not plugged up, but it is dirty enough to where it can use some cleaner, but I'm using the Viper cleaner, and the Viper cleaner is not harsh on these units. So I'm gonna use cleaner. Normally I use just straight water, you know, but that's on systems that I maintain every year.
that's on systems that I maintain every year. And uh, he just this is a repeat customer of mine, but he just bought this house. And the previous homeowners admitted to him that they never had a heat and air after it was put in. They never called back for magnets or checkups or nothing. So that coil, even though it doesn't look that bad, it could be very much more embedded than you can see. So I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is wet it and get these leaves out of and get this grass out the bottom. all right the viper the viper doesn't really foam up all that much but it does do a good job at cleaning as you'll see here it will get that stuff off though you can see it coming off But I, I'm going to try the blue Viper next time. This is the yellow one, but they say the blue one foams up really good. So I'm going to try it. But it does get the dirt off. You see the dirt coming right off of it. And no, it's not pushing it deeper in the coil. It's falling off the coil and the water's going straight through. This is a single row coil. Okay, pressures are looking good. That subcooling, okay, it's coming down to 15. The target subcooling on this unit is 13. Brett. We're at 15 to 16, I'm not gonna touch it. Target's 13, that's only three degrees above, I like it. So I'm gonna leave it there. OK, 
Okay, I got all the panels back on. I clean the panels outside and inside when I do these. It's got some gunk on it right here. It feels like silicone. I don't know how that got on there, but you know. And look, oh, roofers, look. Look at the roof and nail. Look at that. A roof and nail. So that means the roofers didn't cover the unit when they uh, put the new roof on, which is pretty typical. All right, guys, I'm gonna go up to the attic portion now. Um, I should be able to film, but I can't promise it. All right, guys, well, I hope y'all enjoyed that video. I couldn't get any film on the inside because uh, the GoPro was going dead. It had like 10% left, so it would have died. I checked the capacitor. It was a 15 microfarad. It was good. Uh, I wiped down the inside of the gas furnace, the blower housing and all that, all, but it was clean. I checked the drain. Um, well, we flushed the drain with the water hose, as y'all saw, but not the most special video in the world, but that is how you perform a maintenance, pretty much. You know, that's the right way to do it. And um, I don't charge an arm and a leg for maintenance. Maintenance to me is just a relationship between me and my customer that keeps my customers coming back to me. And then, you know, when their stuff breaks or needs to be changed out, more than likely, more than likely they're gonna use me. They're not even gonna get another price. So anyway, uh, I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I wanted to try the GoPro. Let me know what you guys think about the GoPro. That was my first time using a chest strap. And uh, it, I think it did pretty good though. And I wanna give a shout out to Curtis from HVAC videos, or no, I'm sorry, uh, that's Chris. To Curtis from uh, HVAC Guy. He's the one that turned me on to the chest strap with the GoPro. And I wanna give a shout out to him. And he's gonna be coming on a live stream with me soon so I can introduce him to all of you guys. For those of you that don't know who he is, most of you probably do. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought about the video and the GoPro. Thank y'all for watching, and we'll see y'all on the next one.